The reality is you have to look for the utility or the value of any investment that you make. You know, you have to say, why are people buying Bitcoin? In, in reality, Bitcoin, just like an NFT is a digital version of art, you know, we compared it to the Mona Lisa. Bitcoin is a digital version of gold. Right. Gold, you know, people say, well, gold has real value as jewelry. Nobody needs gold jewelry. People like gold jewelry because, you know, it, it keeps a shine, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of reasons to love gold as jewelry. But if, if gold jewelry went away, the world wouldn't change, yeah. you know, and there's only a really there's a few manufacturing applications. But gold has value because people assign it value. And that's what those types of investments are called store of value. They're kind of like commodities, like you just said. Bitcoin's the same way. It just happens to be digital. It's limited by an algorithm and how many that's created. So there's a scarcity factor. You can't just create it forever. And because of that, and because it's easy to transfer, it's easy in some cases to use for cross-border payments between country, people in different countries. So there's some utility, but mostly people buy Bitcoin and own Bitcoin like I do because other people own Bitcoin, just yeah. like people buy gold. Now you hear a lot of stories. Bitcoin is a hedge to inflation. Gold is a hedge to inflation. It's not. You know, we're having a lot of inflation right now. Bitcoin ain't going up. We're having a lot of inflation right now. Gold ain't going up. You know, yeah. they, they've they bounced around pretty much where they are. And so you've got to understand if you're buying Bitcoin, it's a store value. And like any store value, gold or otherwise, it's the price is based on supply and demand. When people are selling, more people are selling than buying, it goes down. When more people are buying than selling, it goes up. And again, that's not a whole lot different than the stock market either. You know, tech stocks have gotten crushed worse than Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, Ethereum's a little, Ethereum's a little bit different, right? Ethereum has some level of utility where you can use it for transactions. Most um, NFTs are bought and sold using Ethereum. So in order to buy a board ape for 100 Ethereum, you have to go buy that Ethereum. And so the more demand there is for board apes or the ape coin or whatever that's um, based on Ethereum, the more value Ethereum, um, the token is going to have. And so when I look at any of my crypto investments, that's the first question I have. What is the core utility of it? What value does it serve? And so that's why I own more Ethereum than I do Bitcoin. Now that said, again, when, when all tokens like stocks have some level of speculators in it, right? People who aren't long-term investors, they just want to buy because they think it's going up. And yeah. so when a market loses those speculators and that we're losing a lot of them now because interest rates are going up yeah. because if you, you know, when you had your choice of putting your hard earned dollars in the bank and earning 0.1% interest, you're probably going to speculate more. But now that interest rates are going up, people are speculating less yep. and you can't borrow money to speculate as inexpensively. So they speculate even less. And as a result, stock prices are going down. You know, I own Amazon, I own Netflix. Those prices have gone down more than my Bitcoin and my Ethereum have gone down. Mm. But that's just the way it goes. And so, you know, at this point in time, what I'm doing is looking to see, are, is there anything there that's gotten so cheap that it's time to really take a strong look at starting to buy some. And I've dabbled, you know, when when Ethereum gets down under, two, you know, under, let's say $1,800, I'll buy a little bit. When um, Bitcoin gets down under $28,000, i will buy it just a little bit because it's really hard to predict how low it's going to go. So I'm not, I haven't gone all in, in yet. I look at DAOs and say, okay, how can they change how company, how people do business? Right. Right. And so one of the big things that's happening right now is, you know, employees are starting to get a little bit more traction and having an impact at the companies that they work for. You know, because at least as of now, there's more jobs than there are employees. And it's not hard to go, you know, leave your job and find another job, possibly paying even more. And companies are having to pay more to keep good people. Employees are getting more and more power. And that power is an example of why DAOs may start to have an impact in, in, in startups going forward. And so I'm starting to talk to companies now that are saying, okay, rather than creating an LLC or rather than creating a subchapter S corporation and incorporating in Delaware, 
I'm going to create a company as a DAO and I'm going to pay my employees good wages because they need to be compensated. But at the same time, I want them to participate more in how we govern the company. And so we're going to give them tokens and we're going to, we're going to post things so that they can vote on different business decisions. Um, and so I think we're, we're really just not even in the first minute of yeah. that industry and that happening. But I think that's the future of DAOs where it may be a better way to do a startup that allows your employees to be more participant and contribute ideas and vote on ideas and make it more democratic, more progressive, more democratic. And if you start to see some companies achieve some success that way, I think you'll see more and more DAOs take place. If you don't eat, sleep and drink your business 24-7 because that's how much you love being part of it, you're, you're probably not right for me as an investor. And I've made, and I say this because I've made so many mistakes. You know, I, I've gotten it wrong, gotten so many investments wrong um, that I've learned what, what to look out for. The crypto stuff is exciting for me, but I like it more for business applications. You know, oh, okay. for content, yeah, for content, it's going to be great. I'd like to see textbooks, you know, college um, textbooks done as an NFT where you can take like a Kindle reader and, and make it part of an NFT. And so, you know, you take your class, um, you, you take uh, L1 class in law school and all the books you have to read. If they're an NFT, when you're done with it at the end of your, your semester, you just sell it. And the author and the publisher get their share and you don't have to go through all that hell of, okay, do I buy a new one, a used one? You know, what do I do with it now that I just spent $300 for the stupid textbook that I'll never use again? So there's a lot of valid applications there. Um, I think in business, we talked about DAOs and how they may change how businesses are started. Um, I think that the distributed aspect of um, approval, right? The centralization aspect of it. So things like um, um, insurance, approvals right right now it, you know insurance is very vertically integrated so you know you you buy your insurance policy or have your insurance policy and then you got to go through your pre-approval and if they don't get give you the pre-approval you go to their boss and their boss and their boss when a better way to do it would be in a decentralized manner as part of a DAO where you've got you know a thousand nodes who are trained on how to approve or disapprove an insurance claim or pre pre-claim and you just let them vote. And if, you know, 51% say yes, it's approved. And if not, not.